let's get started. And whoever joins us, joins us. So if you've got something to eat, enjoy it now. I just started with my my hummus. So I've got something delicious to eat too. So right now, I just finished my hummus and crackers. The missus created the hummus. Delicious, absolutely delicious. That's what I've got. Oh, hi everyone. So, um, have a seat, sit down, hopefully you've got something to eat. But I'm just starting to finish my hummus. I was just mentioning, we used dry beans, which we soak for a day and then we boil them for an hour and then we blend them up with some sesame seed paste and, you know, all that fancy stuff that goes into that. So what I've got for lunch today, I've got butter chicken, which is chicken, chicken curry. Sorry, computer's over here, so like if I see comments, I'm looking over here. I've got my power station right here. I've got my cell phone over here. So I've got butter chicken, I've got rice, and I have my, my curried beans, peas, and carrots, and corn mixture, <laughs> which usually I mix in with my beans. Or I mix in with my rice, so it's not as uh, not as potent. So I'm doing that, and yes, I have dessert. So it can never beat. Yeah, it's much better. I like it way better than separate. But like, well, I, I my fiance would beg to differ with that. She likes to eat compartmentally. You know, I'll start with this, I'll eat this, and I'll go with this. But I'm more the type of person that's like, I'll just mix it all in. I do. I do like hot chicken, so like I do tend to eat chicken sometimes by itself, but um, occasionally I will mix it in with the rice instead. So um, obviously any meal is not complete if you don't have cookies for dessert. You gotta have cookies. And my my death by choice is Oreos. I love Oreos. Oh my God, do I love Oreos. If you could make like everything a flavor of Oreo, I would probably, I would probably have it. I mean, if you can make your house out of an Oreo, I would. But I do have a uh, miniature mandarin orange, which is delicious too. So I've been starving today because, as you can tell, it took me a little bit of setup to do this. I started it early. Um, but like I mentioned, I don't have a basement. Or maybe that was in one of the classes yesterday. But I don't have a basement. So the ground floor is where I live. And if, if you watch my vlog, you can see as I walk down the side of the house, the slope of the house or a slope of the land goes like this, but the house kind of uncovers itself in the land, and then I have a back sliding door on the ground floor. Um, so I store all of my tools up in the attic, and recently we had a wasp infestation, so I had to spray for the wasp last week. So I haven't been going in the attic to get cool, the tools down until today to make sure that the wasps were dead. So today I went up and did all that. So it's, I am definitely worked up quite the appetite. So I'm gonna get a few mouthfuls first, and then I'll share with you kind of um, the different tools and the different um, styles of tools, the different things that go through my head when I'm prepping for a project or how I start the day for the project, what I want, my tool belt, stuff like that, you know, safety basics. And as you can see, I have a pretty fair amount of tools on the table. This is just a sample. You'll see more as I'm building the playground. So let me get a few mouthfuls of this because this stuff is delicious. You know, like a mukbang is like a cooking show almost, except like you didn't do any of the cooking. So you're sampling the food and talking about how delicious it tastes. Like if you're not the one, I like cooking shows, but I don't like cooking shows. Because it's like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it tastes amazing, but like some people are just like a little overly emphatic about how good something tastes. I don't know if you feel me on that one. But... So yeah, right now I'm sitting underneath my Japanese maple tree. And I've got a few honeybees that are flying around right now. Uh, American, European honeybees, the ones that pollinate your, your fruits and stuff like that. The other day, those wasps that I had eradicated or evicted out of my home, they were looking over at the neighbor's house. So I don't know if they found a new place to go, but I haven't seen them for a while. All right. Cool. So thank you for joining me. And as always, caffeine is king. 
came up with a new hashtag, Calf Nation. Like calf, caffeination? Yeah. Calf Nation. Let's start making that's gonna be my um gonna be my merch. My merch is gonna say calf nation on it. Oh, that's good. Sorry. I had the food I had the food networking on that one. All right, so let's kind of get started with how I prepare for my, my day normally um when I'm working for a project. First things first, safety. Safety, 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 safety. I know I'm wearing these sunglasses right now, but um, typically I'll only wear my sunglasses when I'm working on something that I don't expect to splatter, explode, uh, shatter, or splinter, okay? If I expect one of those things to happen, I'm gonna wear my safety glasses. So the safety glasses I choose to use are these ones, which they double as my blue light filtering glass. I don't know if you can see how much light comes through them, but they're kind of an orange color. They're a blue light um, filtering lens, so they filter out blue light at night. So if like I want to watch TV and the TV light's bothering me and I don't want it to mess up my sleep, I'll wear these occasionally. But mostly I wear these outdoors for landscaping when I'm when I'm you know cleaning the lawn with my weed whacker. I want to cover my eyes. So these are essential. They will pretty much block everything that I need uh, to keep out of my eyes. So that is numero uno that has to be on my list in my tool belt or on me. Second, I'm not a huge fan of these gloves, but a pair of gloves are absolutely essential. Um, one of the most important things is not to cut your hands, right? Because your hands are doing the work. Your hands are what's meant to complete the project. You don't want to damage your hands. You damage your hands and you can't work on your project. And if you can, it's a real nuisance because you don't want to distract yourself. If you're putting a nail or a screw or you're cutting with a saw, you don't want a nagging injury on your finger to steal your attention when you're trying to focus all of your attention on being safe for these things. So good pair of gloves, definitely essential. That has to be uh, part of my tool belt. I don't know if you can hear it, but this thing here that I bought, this thing is so cool. This is my power supply. So it clips on my batteries. And I'll introduce you to what the batteries are for these, this equipment, but it's an attachment that can power, literally I plug my, my outlet plug for the computer right into this thing. So it's powering it, but I didn't know a little fan came out when it overheated. So cool. So I've kind of organized the table in a way where I want to focus on what's in the middle first. I'll share with you why I've organized the tools over here this way and why I've organized the ones over here. Maybe just based on observation, you may already have an idea of how I've organized it, why I've organized it this way. Okay. But these things in the center tend to be what I'm going to grab and put into my tool belt after I've grabbed my safety equipment. So good old tape measure. Usually 30 foot is pretty standard, but I want something that can easily retract. I want something that can hold in place with a little clip here. Um, this is going to be hugely important. You can probably see me using this hundreds of times to cut two by fours, four by fours, all that stuff in order to assemble the decking for this playground. Uh, a standard nailing hammer, or standard, uh, we'll say carpenter's hammer. Right? This is pretty, pretty standard hammer. It's got the claw on one side, pull out nails if I need it got the blunt end of it that I can use to pound things in or to, to break things away. I may even use this to help tap wood into place, okay? If I want to be more gentle that day, maybe I may not need uh, a nailing hammer, my um, construction hammer, but I might go with a blunt, blunt hammer like this, which is actually made of plastic, and inside of this has got some sand to help deaden the blow, all right? So the dead blow means that the thing doesn't bounce back after you hit something. So I might use this to help tap my wood in place so it doesn't damage my wood. A nice large flathead screwdriver is is a great thing to have because you tend to pry, you tend to hit things, break them apart. This tends to be a nice tool. Okay. Needle nose pliers. I always like to keep one small pair of needle nose pliers that are, you know, just needle nose pliers. They do have uh, some cutters in the center here for uh, clipping maybe zip ties or small wire or plastic. But these are kind of nice to have. They're small, they're easy to fit into difficult, tight spaces. Okay. Uh, I tend to also like to carry a utility knife. Um, it's got a trapezoid blade inside of it. 
This is great for cutting open plastic, cutting pretty much anything you need. I used this pretty extensively when I built uh, when I built that wall downstairs to create that custom closet. I cut a lot of drywall with this. Okay. Um, I also like to have my speed square. This is uh, essentially um, a mathematics tool, okay? and it involves a lot of graduated scales. It deals with a lot of angles, and it helps you maintain mostly right angles, but this helps you maintain the angles that you want to cut things and connect things. Uh, this is also really great for roofing, but this is called a speed square. So you'll see me using this a lot to mark out things and to keep things organized and situated. And from time to time, while I'm talking and eating, feel free to throw a question in or a comment or anything like that. I'll, I'll check it from time to time over here on my computer screen, okay? Um, what you'll see me using in the beginning and this isn't necessarily going to be part of my tool belt because it's just too heavy. This is a three pounds uh, handheld sledgehammer. I'm probably going to use this to help me um, tamp down or flatten out rock in the foundation of my giant four by four posts that are going to create the foundational structure for the playground. Um, utility pencil, utility sharpener, or if you don't want to carry your sharpener, one of the things I like to carry around is a multi-tool. I don't know if you are familiar with multi-tools, but these are those folding uh, pliers that have different tools that are associated inside. They're compartmentalized and stored inside the actual uh, pliers themselves. This particular multi-tool that I have that's been very reliable for me, it's a, uh, a Gerber, Gerber multi-tool. Uh, Gerber is a good brand if, you're ever, if you ever want a multi-tool. Um, I would say no matter what you do in your life uh, and anywhere you go, you should probably always have a multi-tool on you or near you. You can't do that in school because it has blades, it has two blades on it. But in your adult life, if you're in a location where it's not prohibited, this is a great tool to have on you in every emergency situation. Okay. So this particular one has a serrated knife. It also has a, a basic uh, continuous blade on this side. So serrated, continuous. I have a flathead screwdriver. Phillips said, which is the cross. I got a little, I actually have a wood saw here. I have scissors on this one. I have pry bar, a bottle, a can, and a bottle opener here. And then I've got the wire cutters, pliers, and slight gripping inside for wrenching. Okay. So that's a nice thing to have. My multi tool that I personally carry most of the time is going to be this one here. This is my pride and joy as far as the, the go to tool for everything I do. This is uh, a Leatherman. Um, this is the Super Tool 300. Yes, I know it's fun. <laughs> they always put the most like basic, super duper names to them. But this is the Super Tool 300, and it comes with a longer serrated knife. It comes with a longer saw. It comes with a more robust screwdriver, one that actually looks like a screwdriver, Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, the only thing that I wish it had that it doesn't have on this, which is why I keep this one around. Is it's got the scissors and it's got a better cat size bottle opener. You know? So um, yeah, this is this is just great. So I always have this on my belt loop. I mean, since the pandemic's been going, I pretty much every day I'm going to put my belt on. I'm gonna put the belt into the belt loop. Um, all right, so that sort of covers what's going on with what tends to be in my tool belt. Uh, and I'll start with safety. I'm gonna get a couple more bites to eat. Hopefully you're enjoying your lunch too, and we'll continue in just a moment. So for those of you that just joined us, I've got uh, butter curry chicken, I've got rice, and I have my bean and vegetable curry mix. I have always my coffee or some form of caffeine. I have my little mandarin orange and two Oreo cookies for dessert. Mm Kind of weird to be eating on camera, to be honest. It is a strange sensation. I hope everybody's day has been pretty good so far. All right, so let's kind of keep this uh, train moving here. I already kind of introduced to you my, my power supply. This power supply has two five 
volt output USBs if you want to charge your um, cell phones or if you want to ch charge anything that runs on a, a 5 volt up to 2.4 amps. And then I have a 120 volt, 150 watt output, which means this thing can power MacBook, a television. I can't do like a refrigerator or a microwave, those require too much energy. But this thing here, this just this adapter and these batteries underneath are absolutely awesome. So let me show you just a moment what it is that powers all of my tools. So this here, this is a six amp hour lithium uh, phosphate battery, which uh, pretty much is the energy source for everything I do with my power tools. So that I got one of those hooked up to my power supply that's running my computer. I've got this battery here that I can plug into any of the green any of the green tools that you see here. This battery works on them. So this is it's an all-in-one platform. Which, if you ever choose to start buying tools, there are better tools than Ryobi. I I don't disagree with that. Personally, I I would love to have a set of Milwaukee tools. They are rock style professional grade. But I'm not doing things professionally. You know, if the future holds me being a handyman or something like that, I will upgrade my tools and get the proper equipment with the proper warranties and long term lifetime warranty stuff. But either way, same type of system. But this battery here only works on Ryobi. It's not going to work on any other brand of tools. So I'm kind of in the Ryobi system ecosystem, so to speak. But yep, this battery powers everything. Um, so the way. I have organized this, like I said, is I've got a certain theme going on over here. I don't know how well I can be seen here. Um, for those of you that just, just popped in, I'm eating curry. I've got rice. I've got dessert. I have coffee. You know I have caffeine. Um, I just went through talking about safety and the equipment that I tend to choose from. It goes into, which I didn't show, a pretty standard tool belt that has a couple of pockets, a place for a hammer place for my screwdriver, place for me to clip anything else that I think is really important, okay? All right. So starting on this side of the table, this is the cutting equipment. So this is gonna be the bulk of tools that I'm going to use in order to create the actual structure itself, okay? So most of my plans uh, for this particular build, I have chosen to use the standard length a two by four, which is eight feet, in order to be the, I guess you could say, the crux of the entire structure. So I'm not going to be doing a ton of cutting of my two by fours because most of my deck is eight feet across. So I'm going to try to do as little cutting as possible because honestly, I don't want this project to take as long as the closet did. That closet downstairs, if you even, maybe I'll post a picture of that again on Classroom, but that was intricate. It required me to do tons of measurements, tons of cutting. I had to take big four, five, four foot by eight foot sheets of plywood that you saw in my last video. And I had to cut them down into individual pieces in order to put them together and create a cabinet. Okay, so maybe not as much. So let's get, let's kind of get at it. So this, this is amazing. This is one of my favorite tools. This is the miter saw, okay? So this particular device here is mostly used to cut things to individual length. So if I wanted to cut down two by fours, or I want to cut down all rods, or I want to cut down anything that's lengthwise. I want to shorten it and I want to put it at an angle, maybe like the trim along the bottom of the floor or the crown molding in homes, something like that. I would cut this. The fact is, I can, I can change the angle of it. I can change angles X, Y, and Z. Okay. So that helps me create the exact shape I need in order to fit pieces together as I move through the house. What's really great about this is it, there's a large opening to fit your your wood in it clamps down here and what's great is when this thing's running as it comes down it's got a nice laser on it and that laser lines up with the line i draw comes down got your safety guard that's blocking the seven inch blade that's in here and you just cut it down open it up done move on i love it this thing is just one of my most favorite right now the only thing that i i would improve on this which i i, I didn't put it in here this bag is supposed to collect the sawdust it doesn't really do a great job so what i did was I found uh, a pipe clamp that I put on my shop vac. And I'm gonna hook my shop vac up to the back of this and run the vacuum while I'm running this so I don't have to worry about all the sawdust ending up all over the place. All right, so let's move on a little bit. So yeah, that takes that six amp hour battery. This here is my circular saw. This is probably gonna be 
You know what? Honestly, I don't know if I have a favorite tool because I'm probably going to just tell you that all of these are my favorite tools. That's just me, I guess. But anyways, so this is my circular saw. This is going to do a lot of plywood cutting. So it's going to cut out the openings on the playground. I'm going to have like these two little cap. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to have like these two little castle archway doors. This is going to help me cut those. It's going to help me cut down the plywood so it fits right for where the kids are going to be walking across the playground. Okay, it's also going to help me cut the wood that I need in order to create the rock wall. So this just does nice flat cutting. So this is circular saw, nice flat planter cuts across big pieces of wood. Okay, so that's going to help me out with that. I always kind of put my flashlight here as my, my Ryobi flashlight. It works with the same battery system. You can see it's, a, it's got that same same pattern in order to put your battery in. But this is kind of always helpful depending on where I am. If I'm in a shed where it's too dark or maybe I, once I cover the playground and I'm underneath and I need some more light, um, that was more helpful inside the house than it's probably going to be outside the house. But nevertheless, it's a nice emergency light. I do tend to use it. Oh, I also tend to have two smaller saws and saws that I tend to use. This one is called a cross-cutting saw. I'll explain what cross-cutting is in a moment. And this is a coping saw. No, it's not a, it's not a saw to help you cope with your emotions, okay? <laughs> All right, anyways, so this tends to be smaller jobs, very intricate cuts, very small, detailed, kind of like jigsaw cuts, okay? That's what this coping saw tends to help you with. And you can remember it's called coping saw kids because it looks like the letter C, okay? So a cross cut saw. This uh, I've used on wood and drywall to help me with uh, car carving out openings for uh, light switches and out uh, electrical outlets and stuff like that. But the teeth on this, the saw teeth kind of cross like this. I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it pretty well here. They cross like this. Okay? And that's because in, in a tree, you tend to have long fibers, long fibers that, that go all the way up the tree. Okay? And so when you're ripping wood, these are the terms, when you're ripping wood, you're cutting parallel to all of those uh, fibers in the tree. So you don't need a robust saw to get through it. Okay, you could, you could take almost any saw and get through it. Um, but if you were to try to cut all those strands and fibers perpendicularly, that gets a lot harder. It's a lot firmer, it's a lot stronger that way. So when you have teeth that are like this, it kind of creates a bigger pathway for more blades to cut through those fibers and we're cross cutting because literally just like an igneous intrusion or a fault we're going to cross cut right through those fibers that's why it's called a cross cutting saw okay uh, you thought you could get away with no earth science <laughs> you know i'm still going to fit science into most of this stuff all right i need to eat a little bit <sighs> sorry to get a little winded all right oh there's more of you here hi all right i hope you're enjoying yourselves i hope you have a little bite to eat i i, I mean anybody want to admit they're having breakfast i mean I, i'm not going to shame you like i could care less like honestly i wish i could wake up that late <laughs> i can't wake up that late with kids nice um oh my god oh my god my kids oh my god they're waking up at like 6 a.m and they're i mean they're having a good time don't get me wrong, they're having a great time. But my goodness, like if I'm if I'm trying to have a nice night with the missus watching TV, most recently we're watching Solar Opposites. We're still big on Bob's, but um go to bed at like ten or eleven o'clock and then the kids are waking up at six. It's like, oh my god, I would like I would just want to sleep at the noon one day. One day. Just I want to roll out of bed at noon. You know, it's just, it's the small things. Anyways, so anybody eating breakfast? Yeah, what's with kids waking up so early? I don't remember if I did that. Do any of you remember waking up early like that? I don't, I don't, I mean, I do on certain days, but like, maybe my memory is just not good from being a kid. Really? No. That seems reasonable, but six is really early. I know. And she gets up, and she's adorable. She she constantly sings, do you want to build a snowman from Frozen? So she's sitting there, Elsa, Anna, do you want to build a snowman? That's ador it's adorable, but it wakes you up. And I can't get back to sleep after that. I mean, 
There's a few things that I can't get back to sleep. Like I got to wake up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. It's hard to go back to sleep. Kids start singing. It's hard to go back to sleep. Yeah, they definitely have. Yeah. My internal clock now does that to me. 7.30 that right now. Hold on a second. But you know what it was? When I was still going to school down in the city with you kids, my internal clock uh, was waking me up no later than 4.45. So if I missed my alarm because it was a late night, my alarm used to go off at 4.10 in the morning. I'd have to roll up at like 4.46, and I was out of the house usually by like 5.05. Um, my body, if I was late and I didn't hear my cell phone, I would probably wake up around 4.45. My body would just wake me up. Thank God that doesn't happen anymore. My internal clock is reset to around like 7, 7-ish. 7 if, the kid, if the kids are quiet, my body wakes up around 7, 7.30. I mean, I remember holidays, like any holiday or birthday, anything that involved presents. I know I used to, I couldn't even sleep the night before, and like I was up early, but I can't remember anything else. My dad was big on bowling on Saturdays for some reason. I don't know why, but, um, sorry for the clinking down there. I, I, some of you who joined me a little later, I was eating my hummus and chips, my homemade hummus and chips. So anyways, my dad used to take me bowling on Saturday mornings. I actually used to be a pretty good bowler. My dad wanted me to be competitive and professional and all this stuff. And I did okay. My average was like around 180, but in order to be professional, you need like 215 to 220 average. I just, I just, I don't know, couldn't do it. So, um, but we'd have to go early. And we would, I would play six games. I don't know if you've ever played bowling before. Well, I think I think professional bowling is great, um, but I think bowling in general, if if it's legit, if if you're playing a legit competition, I don't think it's too rigged. It also depends on your ball. Joel, we could have a whole debate about that. <laughs> but but if you've ever been bowling, it's not easy and it's exhausting because you're throwing around this heavy ball. And my dad used to make me play three games in the morning. I used to be it used to be from like eight to eleven in the morning. And then I would play from like noon to three in the afternoon. So like I get an hour break in between. Eat, we'd eat like you know greasy spoon stuff from like the like bowling bar or whatever. And then I go back to bowling. But like I bowled for like I did that for like eight years. You know. So I mean you can't. I mean you can't get better unless you practice. But yeah, it's it, it was. Ex uh, guys. Yeah, my the ball. I was throwing a fifteen pound ball. You know, and I was probably. You know, I mean, think about if you got a younger brother or sister who's like, you know, 10 or 11 years old. Like that, I mean, 10 or 11 year old taking a 15 pound ball and throwing it down the alley you know, 200 times a day is, it gets a little exhausting. Um, oh, sorry, 15, 15, one five. Sorry. Yeah. It was, I mean, it's still heavy. I mean, if you've ever picked up a 15 pound weight with Mr. Um, Damascus, I mean, 15 pounds is pretty heavy for a little kid. So, you know, yeah, it was it was a bit to handle. Um, but anyways, I digress. So, yeah, I used to wake up really early for that. But when I got older, I was like, I'm not having this. I'm like, I want to watch Saturday morning cartoons like every other kid. I want to go to school. I want to talk about X-Men. Right. I don't want to have to talk about bowling. But anyways, I digress. I digress. Yeah, that is probably about the weight of a large watermelon. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, all right. So let's move over to this side of the table here. Um, so. School belt. School belt. My safety's back here, my glasses, my gloves. So our cutting, the cutting side of things, so what I need kind of whatever or whenever I need it. And then over here is this is my fastener. So this is the fastening side. This is what's going to make everything stick together and so that the playground doesn't fall apart and kill my kids. Like, seriously. Like, I got to build this thing rock solid. Like, probably not going to let my kids play on it until, like, literally I jump and, like, throw myself around on this thing, which... I'll do a video for that too. Um, but I need to make sure that this thing is not going to shift. It's not going to move. It's not going to creak. It's not going to like start to sag. Like I got to make sure this thing is solid. So the fastening side of things is supposed to be the most important, you know, to maintain the strength of this. Okay. So yeah. Now, the supports for this thing, thanks for the question. I have 
uh, if you if you go back in my my haul video, I am taking these really really long posts that are four inches by four inches square, and I'm feeding them up into the trailer. I'm going to be using those four posts as the beginning of my foundation. And I'm going to attach all the two by fours, two by sixes, and all the plywood to. So they're going to be kind of like the um, exoskeleton of my playground. Everything's going to attach to those. And underneath in the ground, I'm going to put about three or four inches of crushed stone that I'm going to pound down. I'm going to try to set my posts, and I'm going to try to get them even and, and plumb and level. And then I'm going to pour cement and concrete in to try to strengthen that base further and give that a few days to cure and then start attaching two by fours to everything and just start erecting this thing into a giant playground. Um, good question. So in order for me to start really putting these things together in my in my haul video, I had to show you I showed you these particular uh, drill bits, but they're not any drill bits. They are specifically built for my, my impact drill. So this impact drill that I played around with that one day and put it into the, the camera, this particular drill will literally, I, if it was not an impact rated drill bit, this will snap drill bits. Like it will just, it'll shear them right off because there's too much torque, okay? And torque is the, the force that causes things to rotate, okay? So there's a lot of torque in this. And so I didn't want to break my build, the bits that I have, which are Ryobi brand. They're good for like hanging picture frames and putting together a few things here and there and drilling holes. But it's not meant for like taking a three inch um, outdoor rated screw and not drilling a hole, but just sending it right into the post and the wood and it being done. So this thing is going to do a lot, a lot of the work for me. Um, I do have my regular uh, drill press or not drill press, my regular, my hand drill, um, because I'm probably gonna use this in order to put my big mixing wand into my bucket so I can mix my cement. So that's probably what this is gonna be for. Um, I might use it to screw in the rock wall pieces that my kids are gonna climb on, but this is light, this is light duty. This is light duty stuff. That's my heavy duty thing, all right? So those are two things that are gonna help me fasten screws into this playground to make sure that it's nice and secure. Um, one of the things I'm also gonna use not for uh, structure purposes, but for um, the purpose of me putting a piece of wood up and tacking it in place so that I can let it go, go to another spot. So it's kind of acting like two people. So when you tack something, you're sticking it on, but it's not permanent. It's there just to help you finish it off because I may not always have my fiance there to be able to help build with me. I do have um, a pneumatic nail gun. So this nail gun, up here you put a cartridge cartridge of nails so i got a cartridge of brads and they're all stuck together and they feed into this cartridge you close up the the chamber and i'll put the battery onto that and in here it generates a lot of air pressure and then when i press down and i press the button my nail goes into the wood okay and so i'm going to use long those long brads at the moment to help me put a two by four in place, put it in, hit it with a two inch brad nail so it holds it in place, not permanently. I'm gonna add the screws to do that. And then I can go to the other side, eight feet away, tack that, make sure that my board is level. I should say, make sure my board's level first, tack it in place, and then start sending in three deck screws using my uh, impact driver. So this is gonna be very handy as well if I'm out there by myself working on playground um these are, i do have a pack of about a thousand two inch brads and I, I don't need a thousand of them um the only other thing that may i may use uh in order to help me protect the playground as i'm building it i do have one more tarp that i didn't use to cover the wood that's under the deck right now if you that you saw in my video but i do have another tarp and this is a staple gun okay so you put staples, I don't think I have any staples in right now. Let's just make sure so we don't have a YouTube blunder moment. Nope, okay, so no staples, we're safe. <laughs> oh my God, Mr. Ryan! Oh my God, oh my God, Mom and Dad, Mr. Ryan put a staple through his finger. No, I didn't, I didn't. Okay. So anyway. Oh, you told me. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, Joel, it's okay. But so what you do is 
I place this up against whatever it is, and then I'll put it up against and boom, it shoots a staple in. So if I want to put a tarp down temporarily and I don't want it to blow away, let's say we're going to get like a week of rain and the plywood on my deck, I didn't coat it with, with a special coating yet, which I have done in the shed. I'm going to put this tarp on and I'm going to staple gun it in so that if the winds come along, it doesn't blow it away and it still protects it from from water washing away or warping the wood. That was a big thing. That's a big thing I'm really trying to prevent on this project. You know, wood's not cheap. You know, every two by four down there that I bought is $4 plus tax. Those uh, pieces of plywood were $30 a piece. Okay, so wood is not a cheap commodity. Okay, it's cheaper than metal, which is why you build houses out of them, not metal. But, you know, I don't want all this stuff just to go bad or to warp or to turn into something that's not useful. Um, so, uh, I got a couple of other devices behind me. Um, this one I'm probably not going to use for this particular uh, build, but I did use it on the last one. Uh, this is a sawzall. There's a long saw that comes out of this thing and just it oscillates back and forth, and you can pretty much cut through anything. I, I use this to help uh, demolish a part of the old wall downstairs to create a bigger opening for the closet. Because that closet was originally only one door, and I opened it wide open to have it as kind of an open wall facing closet not a walk-in but an open wall okay so this is for demolishing things usually or cutting pipe uh the jigsaw this jigsaw here is going to help me kind of i don't know if you can see that but there's a little little uh saw in here and that helps me cut nice circles or or pathways along plywood so like i said i'm, I'm going to try to create two little archways for the kids to run through and part of the process of getting those nice Rounded cuts will be me taking this jigsaw and following a line that I draw out. Okay. So that, friends, is all of my tools that are going to be associated, or at least it's it's a good portion. I'll probably show maybe a few more smaller ones. Like I have a few things going to help me guide my circular saw across my uh, plywood so I get a nice straight cut. Uh, that's down in the shed, and I got an extension piece coming. But that's pretty much the basics, and I'll I'll be sure that as we continue to uh, keep this adulting club thing going, or I keep the adulting club vlogs going, so you can see what the update is. I'll introduce new equipment as it seems fit. Um, otherwise, I guess I'm probably just going to finish my lunch here. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the video and. Uh, Oh, yeah, the weather's not too bad right now. I'm probably going to get sunburned because yeah, I have barely any melatonin in my skin. So I'm going to probably look like a, a red lobster pretty soon on my arm. But the hat's keeping my head uh, pretty well. Temperature, it's, I think, around 55. Uh, I mean, compared to the other day, if you if you were watching that vlog, yeah, it was pretty crazy that it was, like, in the 30s and snowing everywhere. It's just nuts. So... Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen again. I think we have seen the end of winter officially. I mean, seven months of winter. Look, I'm an earth science teacher, and I'm all for, like, oddities in the weather and the earth. But that was just unnecessary. That was an unnecessary amount of time. So, um, no, no more winter, Chris. Yeah, I guess, I guess if it, I mean, in terms of the stay at home order, yeah, more winter makes it easier to stay inside than it does, um, it does if the weather's nice outside. So I feel like on that one, um, I hope you've been able to at least get some fresh air. I mean, I hope that you've been at least able to toss a mask on or, or, or a scarf or something and you've been able to take a walk outside, uh, try to get some air outside of the house or the, the apartment and, you know, try to find some salvation in that. Uh, I hope that you know, this adulting club will be both educational and entertaining to you to help, you know, at least help you live a little vicariously in case you can't get outside. Uh, at least, you know, I'm trying to do something for you and, and, and myself, and hopefully we can all just bring this thing together in this club. So um, without further ado, uh, I appreciate you coming today. Uh, I don't have an exact date for the next one. Um, 
I will. It's going to be a little bit more CBD, and I'll try to flood you, your Jupiters, and your well, not flood you, but I'll I'll try to announce it enough, Jupiter and Google Classroom, and on WebEx for you to know when it's coming if you want to join me. Uh, if if it goes a stretch where it's too hard to do live outdoors, I'll try to keep shooting some B-roll footage, and I'll edit it in iMovie and post it up on YouTube channel. But uh, Otherwise, it was really good to have you come here and join me for something that's not earth science related. That was really nice and that helps me and I hope it helps you. So anyways, until next time, have fun, eat your lunch, uh, Christopher and Andy, no more snow, no more snow, okay? <laughs> All right, bye everybody.